Hello, everyone. This is Mark Jones, Senior Pastor at Memorial Baptist Church. Right now, I am recording from my back porch. It's kind of a rainy day. Uh, this is my backyard, and uh, you probably can't tell, but but through the trees there in the background is the Blue Ridge Mountain. Now, here in the Shenandoah Valley, that's that's no big deal. We see it. We see on the east, we see the, the Blue Ridge Mountains, and in the west, we see the Allegheny Mountains, which is even larger. But but out in Texas and South Carolina and Oklahoma and other people that watch this, well, that's, that's kind of a big deal. So anyway, it's in my backyard. How cool is that? Well, I am sharing with you uh, in this four-part series of how to share your faith using your testimony. Now, uh, last week, and like I said, we're continuing our four-part series, and I'm asking that you consider during this time to put or share uh, this um, this devotion on your page. That helps us to get the word out. And our goal on this is to see a thousand people trained in how to share their faith in Christ. Well, last time we looked at Titus 3.3 and it reminded us of the first part of using your testimony to share your faith, my life before Christ. This passage in Titus continues to unfold in how to create and use your testimony in Titus 3.4. Let me read that for you. But when the goodness and love for man appeared from God, our Savior. Now, you may wonder how, what we can do with such a short verse that is not even a completed sentence, but it's a statement of God's providence for our salvation, and that is powerful. Here's what it's telling us. First of all, that the mission of Jesus Christ is out of God's love for us. John 3, 16 through 17 says, For God so loved the world in this way, that he gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world that he might condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. The next one is that the cost of that mission of love was Christ being ex executed for our sins. Romans 5, 8 says, But God proves his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. And the next thing, the third thing I want to share with you, it shares with us that we cannot even come to God without the work of God drawing us to him. John 6, 44 says, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. Now, why am I drawing all of this out of these verses? Because in the next part of your testimony, it is important that you understand and communicate that it is God that draws us to know Jesus Christ and not our own search for him. You may have been on a search, but it is God's Holy Spirit that led you through that search. But for most of us, God worked through our circumstances that led us to him. Communicating how God did that in your life is a tremendous bridge to the other person that you're sharing with. In a way, it is, a say, it is saying that if it can happen for this person, it can happen for me. Now, I'm going to share with you the section of my testimony of how I came to know Christ. But for it to make sense, I need to proceed it with a section of my testimony of my life before Christ. I share this with you in the last testimony, but once again, I grew up in a Christian home and was raised in Bible-believing churches. I had times of rebellion in my life, but I was not too bad of a kid. I thought that I was a Christian, but I did not really understand what that commitment meant. In college, for the first two years of my life, alcohol abuse really got out of hand in my life, followed by a lot of the dumb things that happened with that lifestyle. During that time, I often sensed God's Holy Spirit reach out to me, but I knew what he wanted. He wanted all of me, my entire life, and I was not ready to give to him. And now, I come to share with you how I know came to know my need for Christ. Here it goes. By the beginning of my third year of college, I had come to the end of myself. 
God was continually reaching out to me, but I was still too stubborn to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of my life. Every year before college started, uh, started back, the members of my fraternity would come back to campus uh, a week early to clean, repair, and repaint the fraternity house. We would work all day and then party at night at the campus bars, and I'd be at those bars too. However, during that summer, about eight to ten young men in the fraternity either got saved or recommitted themselves to God. They were all from different places in Oklahoma, and the only thing that they had in common in their experience was Jesus Christ. And they noticed that each other were not going to the bars, and they began to find out what God had done in their lives during that last summer. From that brought about uh, what brought about a fraternity of Christ within the social fraternity that we all shared with the other 50 men. It was the beginning of a revival in our fraternity. When school started back, we had our first dinner and it was announced that there would be a Bible study in the living room of the fraternity house and I attended. The Bible study was all over the place and talked about a lot of things mostly what God had done in their lives for, of some of these men during the summer. I listened and I talked some, but through all of it, I sensed that the Holy Spirit was reaching out to me. I knew what I was there for and what God wanted from me. Now, cut right there. And that is how I came to know my need for Christ section of my testimony. Next devotion, I will share with you how I came to know Christ. Now, please take a moment to think through and maybe even say how you came to know your need for Christ. You might even want to take the time to write it down. I'm going to stop here for about five seconds and, and you can, you can uh, pause the devotion and, and think through that and talk through how you came to know your need for Christ. All right, we're back. Now, in the next devotion, I will share with you how to connect the experience of coming to know your need for Christ with that all-important how I came to know Christ. I look forward to sharing that with you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that it's out of love that you've pursued us. We are undeserving, and in fact, justice leads us only to be condemned. But from your grace, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to pay the price for our sins through his execution on the cross. And from that great love and sacrifice, your Holy Spirit reached out to us to draw us to you and a new life in Christ. Father, show us how to share what you have done in, to, in us to a world that is desperate to know you. Use us greatly, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, thanks for meeting with me. And I'm looking forward to getting with you next time. God bless you.